Welcome traders to this week's live market analysis session with me, Patrick Mullaney. We're going to get started here in just another 10 seconds or so. If you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, you can type a Y into the chat box. Okay, let's get going. <clears throat> so for those of you who are here for the first time, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly, with respect to today's presentation, the analysis and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Like I say, if you're here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. Um, after I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. I essentially had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriate at that stage, day gambling. However, after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. But as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. Say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience was an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading, and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, uh, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. Most importantly, though, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process-orientated, and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tipmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for about three to five markets that I'm actively tracking, and I share those through the Tipmill Trading View accounts. I also run Tipmill's e-mini strategy Facebook group where I post a daily trade plan outlining my positions for the cash trading session in New York. I give my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the markets. These pre-market plans have delivered over 3,500 points of profit since we launched the service uh, last year in April. The second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. 
The Tick Mill Futures Trading Telegram group is a real-time environment. On a daily basis, I share in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the New York Cash Trading Session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. Uh, let's jump into the charts today. We're going to actually uh, move into the intraday charts. I'm going to pull up a bunch of one hour charts here that uh, I'm tracking at the moment, and we'll see if we can identify some intraday trading opportunities. What I would say is obviously we have a fair bit of volatility coming up today. We've got the ECB. Um, announcing and we have the ECB press conference. They're obviously expected to announce a 75 basis point hike today in interest rates. Also uh, in uh, running pretty much alongside that press conference is going to be the Fed Chair Powell is speaking at uh, the Cato Institute and obviously markets will be paying very close attention to what he has to say with respect to interest rates as well. So um, just bear that in mind when we're looking at these setups uh, for the session ahead. So we're going to start, as always, with the uh, S&P 500. And we uh, we tested down into that uh, the 3880 area that, uh, that I've referenced previously. And we have seen a, a decent bid develop in the market yesterday. Uh, we traded this from the long side in the, in the group that I run in both groups. And uh, we have since put in a high in just ahead of that 4,000 level. Now, if we hold this high, then I'd be looking for a three-way corrective move back into the high volume mode here, uh, which gives us the 3930s. From there, I watch for bullish reversal patterns to uh, engage on the long side. And my target really for this move is going to be up into the weekly R1 4030, weekly projected range resistance at 4040. And just above there, we have the value area high at 40.43. Now, at the moment, uh, we have this high in place. We didn't get any divergence on this high. So there is the potential here, uh, like I say, that this is a, a wave three high that we're seeing. And it may be that we correct in a more shallow fashion, print another high, and then get this deeper pullback. But for now, versus this high, my uh, area of interest is going to be this high volume mode at the 39.30s to engage on the long side, looking for a move up into the 40. 40s as the next upside objective for this uh, for this advance in terms of the uh, e mini s p nasdaq similar situation we have a nice potential five wave advance here coming off those lows looking for a three wave corrective move into our high volume mode so we're looking for a test of 12100 12110 Again, we watch for bullish reversal patterns here to engage on the long side. Our upside objective is going to be into the uh, weekly projected range resistance, 12,530. Uh, just below there, weekly R1, 12,500. Uh, we also have the value area high there, 12,580. So that's our next target on the upside for the NASDAQ. Dow Jones, YM. Uh, we are looking for a pullback now into uh, this potential pitchfork support, which comes in at 31,200 area. Again, we watch for bullish reversal patterns here. We're going to engage on the long side, looking for a move up into the weekly R1, the daily projected range resistance and weekly projected range resistance, which should see us test up into that 32,000 level on the upside. Now, with all of, um, with these indexes, obviously, if we don't hold these key support areas, these high volume nodes, then what we've potentially got is a failed upside break here, and we're going to roll over and print new lows. But for now, uh, just to be clear, my focus is on another leg at least to the upside in, uh, in corrective trading. We have the DAX testing pivotal support here now. So we are looking for the DAX to hold 12,780. So watching for bullish reversal patterns here to engage on the long side, looking for a move up into 13,130. 
Now, interestingly, the DAX is, uh, is the weaker of the global equities at the moment. And I am, uh, if we just go out to the uh, daily and the weekly time frame, just so I can clarify the position here. Let me pull up the DAX. I did post this as a setup in the, uh, on the Ticknell Trading View group here. Any close on the DAX through the support area here at 12,400, I will actually be looking to engage on the short side, uh, looking for a move down to test into the uh, quality objective 11,150. So that's, that's one of the caveats there in terms of the DAX to pay close attention to, because if we don't hold support here in the DAX, I'm anticipating we're going to roll over and, uh, and I'll be looking at downside objectives. Nikkei. Uh, looking bullish here. So any pullback now in the Nikkei, initially we'll look at the high volume nodes at uh, 27,610. From there, we watch the bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for an extension up into the 28,300 area. Could do a deeper pullback here into test this potential inverse head and shoulders scenario here, uh, which would give us 27,450. Same story that I'm watching the bullish reversal patterns to get in on the long side, and we're looking for an extension to the upside. The DAC, uh, sorry, the uh, dollar index. Uh, I'm sure the dollar index uh, from above the 110 level, uh, as I've shared with uh, members in the trading group. I'm watching now for any corrective moves back into test the underside of this ascending trendline support. So previous support, now resistance. So any move up into the 110.17. Um, watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, initially thinking about a move down into this high volume node, 108.70s. And if we get through there, then we're thinking about the value area low here at 108.14. I'm going to be running through these pretty quickly today because I want to, uh, want to be uh, prepared for the, uh, the press conferences and the power speech. So if you do have any questions, just drop them into the chat box and I'll aim to come back to them at the end of the session. Or if you have a pair you want me to take a look at that I don't cover in, uh, in the charts that I'm tracking here, you can type that into the chat box and I will take a look at it for you and give you a view. Uh, the euro dollar, tracking a potential five wave sequence off the low here. So we have our low, we have one, two, three, four, We're looking for a fifth wave extension up into the weekly R1, 10040. From there, I see the potential for a pretty sharp pullback. And this could be caused, obviously, by the ECB press conference. But um, as long as we hold into this uh, 99 area, just above 99, 99.20s, watch for bullish reversal patterns. I still think we've got another leg to the upside if we're going to qualify this as an impulse leg off the lows. Sterling. Pull this up here. So uh, Sterling looks to be at least putting in a, an equality test here. So versus the 114.70 low, we look for 116.13. So that's an equal leg to the first leg off the low from our swing low, gives us that area. I'd be then looking for pullbacks, potential inverse head and shoulders scenario developing into the high volume mode here, 115.10. Watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side and we look for weekly projected range resistance, weekly R1 at uh, 116.70s and the high, uh, sorry, the value area high at 116.90s. Dollar yen, uh, currently short the dollar yen from the, uh, the 145 test as, uh, as shared with traders in the, the trading group. So what I'm watching now is can we hold 143.24, so that's an equality test versus this current swing structure here. If we do, there's the potential we make another new high and test that 145. Although we have had uh, the BOJ, the Ministry of Finance, the FSA in, uh, in Japan out overnight, uh, making reference to the speed in which the yen has declined and their concerns regarding that. So I don't know if traders are going to be as interested in bidding this back up, but certainly I would be paying close attention if we take out this trend line resistance now, um, I'd be looking to engage on the long side, looking for at least one more push up into that 145 handle um, 
is the area I'd be watching there. Now, inverse to the dolly, uh, inverse to the uh, dolly yen, obviously, uh, we have US yields here, the 10 year yield. And what I'm looking for now is um, similar to that dollar pattern that I just referenced, uh, looking for one more low here and then a three wave corrective move. So that would complete a five wave sequence off the, off the high. So we have one, two, three, four, five, suggesting impulse. So then we look for a three wave corrective move, uh, which could set up a nice head and shoulder scenario here. So anything back into that 3.29%, watch bearish reversal patterns. And uh, we look for an equality of test to the downside back into the 3% level would be what I've been looking for in terms of those US 10 year yields. Euro yen, looking for one more high here in the Euro yen. We have the weekly R3 and monthly projected range resistance, and we have some potential momentum divergence developing here. So as price makes new high, the momentum indicator doesn't make new high. So we watch a bearish reversal patterns here in terms of the Euro yen to engage on the short side, looking for a three wave corrective move as a minimum back into the 142.50s from that 145 area on the upside. Sterling Yen looking for an equality test here um, versus the current swing structure we have in place. So as we hold resistance at 165.90s, we look for another leg to the downside to test into this 164.30 area. And then we watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a push up into the uh, into the 165.50s. The ECB has raised rates by 75 basis points. That's just been released now. So uh, their interest rate now is sitting at 1.5%. That's a record raise for the ECB in, uh, in the past decade, really. Aussie yen. Similar situation here. I'm looking for any pullback now into the 96.30s, which will complete a three wave corrective move. Then I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for an extension up into uh, weekly R3 87.80s as the next upside objective. CAD yen. <coughs> Similar situation, we've actually tested into the equality objective. So what I'm watching for now with this CAD yen is any break of this trend line resistance here. I'll just draw this in for you guys. <clears throat> so any close back through 109.70s, I want to be on the long side, looking for a move up into 110.80s as the next upside objective for the CAD yen. Dollar CAD. Similar setup to, uh, to the dollar index here. So I'm looking for any push back into 131.50s. I'm looking for a bearish rejection there to engage on the short side. And we're looking for a move down into the value area low here, minimum 130.60s on the downside. Aussie dollar. Looking for, uh, if we go to the Aussie dollar actually on the daily time frame, I'll show you what I'm tracking here. We've got potential uh, double rejection here from a, a double bottom, we have some momentum divergence. So if we get a close today back at highs or new highs, 67.90s, I'm actually going to trade the Aussie dollar on the long side, initially looking for a move back into the uh, high volume node here, 69. And if we can get through there, then we have this low volume node at the 70.50s, and then a look at 71. So I'm really paying close attention to the close here on this Aussie dollar. As I see the potential, if we can get back into the uh, into the upper <coughs> end of the range of today's candle, as an opportunity on the long side. Let's take a look here, Kiwi dollar. We've got that three-way corrective move, and we're taking off. Don't really have a trade at the moment in the Kiwi dollar. Prefer to watch that Aussie tonight on the close. Gold, I am uh, a long gold on the, let's go to the daily here and I can show you. So we had this nice outside reversal yesterday, uh, closed, turning the five day volume weighted average price bullish, gives us this green close. So I'm looking for an extension up here in gold now to test 1840s 
obviously any loss of, uh, of this 1699 area, and then we'll be back testing into a potential double bottom here at 1679. Let's flip back to the hourly here. So yeah, any pullback from here into the high volume node now, if you're not in this gold trade, is an opportunity here at 1720s. Watch for bullish reversal happens there to engage on the long side. And again, thinking about those daily targets as opposed to just these uh, intraday hourly time frame, suggesting 1750 as the next upside objective. Silver, nice pattern developing here in silver as well. So we have uh, an equality objective versus the swing structure here. These lows at 1770 give us an equality objective, 1882. And you can see how this leg is subdividing nicely into a five wave sequence here. So I'm looking for any push now into this area to engage on the short side initially, looking for a move back into test support at uh, this 1820 area. And then from there, I think we can see bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side and I'd be targeting to move up into 1930 as the next upside objective. Crude oil breaking down and um, let's just go, let's just do this. So channel here and see what we can do on the downside. So holding this trend channel. So what I'll be watching for here with crude uh, from this swing high, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven swing into the 7850s. I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side, thinking about at least a three wave correction back into trend channel resistance, 8440s. So pay close attention to uh, a seven swing move down into the 7850s. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there as an opportunity on the long side. Bitcoin. <clears throat> Really now, as we trade below this 19,500, the focus is on the downside and I'm looking for a rollover here. The equality objective, as those of you who are here on uh, or are here regularly, you'll know that this is what I'm looking for in Bitcoin. <clears throat> We're looking for Bitcoin to break down to test the equality objective here versus this swing. So we have 12,185. So I've got nothing to do really at this stage of Bitcoin until we test into that area. Certainly I'll be short to any move through 17,750, uh, targeting that uh, 12,185. But for now, kind of in no man's land here. And uh, there doesn't appear to be much actual appetite or interest in the markets for Bitcoin at the moment. So let's just take a look here. I'm going to wrap things up with the Euro Aussie. Looking for any three wave corrective move now in the Euro Aussie back into 147.30s. And then going to be looking for a move up into 149.20s to complete that cycle. Equally, watch any tests into the cluster here. We've got daily projected range resistance, weekly projected range resistance, weekly R2. So we move into this 149, as long as we maintain momentum divergence here. So price making new highs, but no new highs in our momentum study. We could actually trade that from the short side to target that move back into the 147s. I'm going to finish up looking here at Euro Sterling. It's broken down already, so that trade hasn't played out. So that's, uh, that's not one that's on the, uh, the watch list now. So really for me today is going to be about this uh, the ECB press conference, Powell speech, any pullbacks in the equity indexes that hold the support areas I've highlighted. Then we're going to, I'm going to be looking to get in again on the long side. I'm looking for at least another leg higher. I'm looking for another leg down in the dollar. I'm looking for a corrective leg higher in the euro and the sterling. Looking for another leg down in dollar yen. And we're looking for gold to, uh, to make a push to the upside as well. So that's the whistle stop tour of the charts that I'm watching this week. Are there any questions or would anyone like me to take a look at a chart I haven't covered in my, uh, in my presentation? For those of you that are interested or aren't already uh, members, if you want to join the uh, Tignal Facebook group and receive my daily trade plan for the S&P 500, 
the cash trading session in New York. You can just request access there. For those of you who want to follow my uh, daily trade setups through TradingView, I'll post that link as well. That's in the chat. And uh, can't see any questions coming through at the moment. So I'm going to wrap this session up here, guys. Like I say, look forward to seeing some of you hopefully in the Facebook group or certainly follow along with the daily trade ideas that I post on TradingView. And, uh, and that concludes this week's session. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much, guys.